Hello brothers and sisters. I'm so glad to see you once again. If you're ready to get in the Word of God, I know the Holy Spirit is going to touch your mind. He's going to touch your heart so that you're going to have all the wisdom you will need to live such a blessed and successful life. So why don't we go ahead. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Let's come before our Father God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this time as our minds and our hearts are fully surrendered to you. I pray that you will have your way and speak to us, Lord, this very day in such ways as we hear your words. We know we're going to experience the fullness of your sweet loving presence and as your Holy Spirit will speak to us. We know, Father, we're going to have all that we need as you speak life into us. We're going to have all that we need to live a life that is truly victorious. So, Lord God, we place this time fully into your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. And we say together, Amen. Praise God and praise God. Well, today the title of the sermon is Passing the Buck. You know, over the years, one thing that I have noticed about many career politicians, especially the ones that are crooked, right, is that they have the tendency to shift the blame onto other people. You know, though they may have been a public servant for a number of years, they will seldom take responsibility for the current problems that our societies are facing. You know, I remember in a recent news interview, you know, the interviewer asked a government official about taking responsibility for the current crises that were upon us. You know, he started <laughs> to blame the previous administration for all of our current woes, upon which the interviewer then boldly asked him, hey, would you ever stop passing the buck onto others? <laughs> well, oh, let me tell you, this quickly silenced the politician. You know, the definition of the phrase passing the buck is the shifting of responsibility or blame to another person. And, and this usually happens, right? When someone doesn't want to do something, he'll give the responsibility to another person. Or it could be the case in which he simply wants to put the blame on someone else so that he will not get yelled at by others. So he just passes the buck to another person and say, yeah, it's his fault. You know, it all originated in the game of poker in which a marker is placed in front of a player to indicate it is his turn to deal. And if he doesn't want to deal, he'll pass the buck. And you know, it just made me wonder, are there times in which God calls us to do something in our lives and we just keep passing the buck? So here's the question to ask. How can we make it a point to stop passing the buck in what God, in what God has called us to do in our lives? Well, look at point number one. It says here, we got to stop making excuses for avoiding your God-given responsibilities. And this is what Peter had to say about our God-given responsibilities. Look what it says here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. It says here, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from, from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, brothers and sisters, simply put, <laughs> we usually know what we're supposed to do or called to do, but oftentimes we fail to do what God has called us to do because we will easily find 1,001 excuses to not to do them. And, you know, so we'll find ways, right, to avoid our responsibilities and we pass the buck onto someone else. You know, let me tell you about this 71-year-old man named Michael Nicholson of Kalamazoo, Michigan. You know, this 
elderly gentleman had earned 29 degrees and is now pursuing his 30th degree. Yeah, you heard me, his 30th degree. And he has one bachelor's degree, two associate degrees, 22 master's degree, three specialist degrees, and one doctoral degree. You know, he is currently working on a master's degree in criminal justice. And he says this, he says, I would like to get to 33 or 34 degrees. I'm almost there, he told ABC News. And he says, when I complete that, I'll feel like I've completed my basic education. And after that, if I'm still alive, he says, right, that will take me to 80 or 81 years of age. And he says, I will then be free to pursue any type of degree. You know, Western Michigan University prop professor, his name is Tom Carey, he said this of Nicholson. He says, I have had 18,000 students in class and I've never heard of anybody like this. <laughs> he says he's the ultimate lifelong learner. And he says, I marvel at his tenacity to go to school. He intrinsically is motivated. He says it's unique, but it almost sounds bizarre. He says some people collect animals and he collects tassels. And, and Nicholson, he said this, he says, eventually it became getting as many as I could. <laughs> and he says, with all those tassels, Nicholson has never been employed in any of the fields of expertise. He stated, I just stayed in school and took menial jobs to pay for the education and just made a point of getting more degrees and eventually I retired so that I could go full-time <laughs> to school. So yeah, he's a full-time student. And, and Professor Carey, he added this, he says, he likes going to school, but he doesn't want responsibility. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it sounds like many Christians. They like attending church and enjoy listening to the pastor's sermons, but they don't really want responsibility. But you know, knowledge for knowledge's sake is empty and pointless. There is a responsibility that comes with biblical truth, a responsibility to use that knowledge to accomplish all that God wills. You know, while Mr. Nicholson enjoys the positive attention of the news media for the many, many degrees he's earned, let's, let us not follow his example. You know, don't be satisfied with being a lifelong hearer of the Word of God while failing to put it into practice. Yes, we must put the Word of God into practice. It's not just about hearing the Word of God and say, okay, I know the Word of God. No, you got to Take it in and say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what the Word of God tells me to do. You know, the question is, would you be willing to go when the Lord asks you to go? <laughs> or are you going to give as many, many excuses as you can? You know, there's a story about a patient in a hospital who knocked over a cup of water, which spilled onto the floor beside the patient's bed. And the patient was afraid he might slip on the water if he got out of bed so he asked a nurse's aide to mop it up and, and the patient didn't know it but the hospital policy said that small spills were the responsibility of the nurses the nurses aides while large spills were to be mopped up by the hospital's housekeeping group so the nurse's aide decided that the spill was a large one and she called the housekeeping department you know, a housekeeper arrived and declared that the spill was a small one. So an argument followed, and he said, and she says, it's not my responsibility, said the nurse's aide, because it's a large puddle. And the housekeeper, however, did not agree. Well, it's not mine, she said. The puddle is too small. <laughs> so the exasperated patient listened for a time, right? Then took a pitcher of water from his night table and poured the whole thing on the floor. And this patient said, is that big enough 
a big enough a puddle for you now, now for you, the both of you to decide? He asked them both. And apparently it was. <laughs> and that was the end of the argument. You know, instead of trying to constantly pass the buck, right? We should have a response that is more like the prophet Isaiah. And this is what he says in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. It says here, Then I, uh, regarding prophet Isaiah, right? I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. Wow. You know, what if God had said to you that, you know, there are a lot of lives that are messed up because of the fact that they don't know me. And what if God then asked you this question, will you go for me to give my message to them and help them to clean up their lives? What would you do? Would you give excuses? Would you say, but God, I'm not gifted. But I really don't have the time. I'm not prepared. I'm not ready. I have other responsibilities. Or would you be like the prophet Isaiah and say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Wow. I think we would please God if all of us would not question God and just say, Lord, I'm ready. Send me. I want to do the work that you have called me to do. So what else can we do to stop passing the buck? Well, look at point number two here. It says, make it your desire and your passion to fulfill all the responsibilities that God has given to you. This is what Peter had to say about it in 2 Peter verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 10. It says here, So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. You know, if you really believe that God has chosen you to do great and mighty things for Him, then get excited about it and give it your all in accomplishing whatever He's called you to do. And stop passing the buck. You know, the, the story goes that when Queen Victoria was a child, she didn't know that she was in line for the throne of England. You know, her instructors trying to prepare her for the future were frustrated because they couldn't motivate her. She just didn't take her studies seriously. So finally, her teachers decided to tell her that one day she would become the Queen of England. And you know, upon hearing this, Victoria, she quietly, quietly said, then I will be good. And the realization that she had inherited this high calling gave her a sense of responsibility that profoundly affected her conduct from then on. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God has given all of His children a very high calling in their lives to carry out His purposes and plans in building His kingdom on this planet Earth. Yeah, for you and for me. And God has promised to all of us, if we are willing to take on the responsibilities, right, he will ensure us great success and you will be blessed by Him. And, and this is what Peter had to say about this in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-4. to 4. It says here, By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. And these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. And you know, we must always remember that when we take our God-given responsibilities seriously, right? Don't make excuses. We will never be lacking. That's what the Word of God tells us. We will never be lacking because He has promised that He will always provide for our every need and guarantees us victory 
and great success. Amen? So, what else can we do to stop passing the buck? Well, the last one here, number three, it says here, we got to stop blaming God for all the mess-ups that have piled up in your life. You know, when we blame God for all the problems and difficulties that we may have in our lives, we will completely lose focus on what God has called us to do. You know, God may speak to us directly in giving us the answers and the solutions we need to our life's problems, problems but because we shift the blame to Him, right? You know what happens? We become deaf to His leading and guidance because we're always upset at God. We're always blaming Him. And you know, sometimes we must take responsibility for our own blunders and take ownership of them. Yes, you heard me. We got to own them and say, yeah, I got these problems because of what I did. And then and only then will we be able to stop passing the buck <laughs> to God. Look what it says here in Proverbs 19.3. It tells us here, people ruin their lives by what? Their own. Everyone say own. <laughs> Their own foolishness. And then are angry at the Lord. Isn't that true? You know, for a lot of people, even if they don't really believe in God, guess what? <laughs> I heard this many a times. They will still blame God for all of their problems that they themselves had created. You know, even though they say, well, I don't really believe in God, but it's because of God that my life is in such a mess. You know, Philip Yancey, this well-known Christian author, uh, in his book called Reaching for the Invisible God, he addresses the questions people ask in the face of tragedy. You know, he writes this. He says, when, person, when Princess Diana died in an automobile crash, he says, I got a phone call from a television producer. And the producer asked him, can you appear on our show? We want you to explain how God could possibly allow such a terrible accident to happen. And without thinking, he says, I replied, could it have had something to do with a drunk driver going 90 miles an hour in a narrow, in a narrow tunnel? How exactly... Was God involved? And he continues, his, his question prompted me to dig out a file folder in which I have stashed notes of things for which God gets blamed for. And he says, I found a quote from boxer Ray Boom Boom Mancini, who had just killed a Korean opponent with a hard right. And, you know, at a press conference after the, the Korean boxer's death, you know, Mancini, he says, Sometimes I wonder why God does the things he does. Oh. <laughs> and in the letter to Dr. James Dobson, right, a young woman asked this anguished question. She says, For four years ago, I was dating a man and became pregnant. And I was devastated. And she says, I asked God, why have you allowed this thing to happen to me? Another woman, whose name is Susan Smith, uh, she's the South Carolina mother who pushed her car and two sons into a lake to drown and then blamed a carjacker for, for the deed. And a carjacker was given all the blame and she wrote uh, this in her official confession. She says, I drop." To the lowest point when I allowed my children to go down that ramp into the water without me. I took off running and screaming, Oh God, oh God, no! What have I done? Why did you let this happen, God? <laughs> and Yancey, he adds this, Exactly, what role did God play in a boxer pummeling his opponent a teenage couple losing control in a backseat, or a mother drowning her children. He says he wonders <laughs> about this. And did God arrange these incidents as tests of faith? To the contrary, he says, I see them as a spectacular demonstration of human freedom exercise 
on a fallen planet. And he says, at such moments, exposed as frail and mortal, we lash out against someone who is not. And that is God. Wow. <laughs> and here's the thing. If we are in constant fellowship with God and truly have a love relationship with Him, you know what? We will not always shift the blame to Him. It will be impossible for us to constantly point our fingers at Him when things do go wrong in our lives. If you really have a loving relationship with our Father God, yeah, you're going to find that you're, you're less likely to say, it's your fault, God. You know, my life is a mess because of the you. <laughs> you know, if you are in the Word daily and, and you are just experiencing such a, such a great intimacy with God, I'm going to tell you, there's a less, less likelihood that you're always going to blame Him. And, and Jesus, He tells us this in John chapter 14, verses 23 to 24. And it says there, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. You know, just imagine Father God and Jesus Himself making their home with us. You know, Jesus clearly tells us that He desires to have fellowship with us. And if we do have this wonderful fellowship with Him, you know, you're going to know that, yeah, He's, he's for you. <laughs> he's not against you. That, that you will not put the blame on Him. Look what it says here in 1 John 5.20. It says here, And we know that the Son of God has come, and He has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and He is eternal life. And if you truly know our Father God, is for us and he's not against us you know don't blame it on God he loves you he wants his best for you you know we will not constantly blame him for all the problems that are taking place in our lives you know just think of Job right with all that had happened to him with all the trials that he had to endure you know in his final testing I'm sure you remember what happened, right? His body was inflicted with boils from the crown of his head all the way to the soles of his feet. Yet here is what he had to say in Job chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. It says here, Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Look what his wife told him. He said, her, his, his wife told him to curse God and die. And he replied, hey, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And in all this, right, it says Job did not sin in what he said. Wow. And that's the kind of response we should have. You say, you know what? I'm not going to blame God. You know, I know that good things happen in my life and yeah, bad things will happen too. But I'm hanging on to my faith in God because I know God is on my side. And if I just look to Him, I trust in Him, I know I will be victorious. I know His blessings will come forth again in my life. Amen? Well, let's take a look at the bottom line verses now. You know, brothers and sisters, I think the most important lesson we can learn from today's sermon is that we, we must stop passing the buck to others, right? And to even God. And we got to take responsibility for our own actions. And, and this reminds me of a Charlie Brown cartoon strip in which Lucy asks Charlie Brown, Why do you think we're put on earth, Charlie? And Charlie replies, I guess, to make others happy. And Lucy says, I don't think I'm making anyone very happy. Of course, nobody's making me very happy either. And then in the final panel, right, Lucy screams at the top of her lungs, 
hey, somebody's not doing his job. Well, guess what? John looks like she's blaming God. And let's make it a point to not be like Lucy, okay? Life is not about just making ourselves happy. It's really about our God-given responsibility to make a difference for others and for God. And I'd like to conclude with this scripture verse in James 4, 17. It tells us here, right? So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. You know, if God has called you to do something, hey, don't make excuses and pass the buck to someone else. Instead, let's take it, right? Let's take that assignment wholeheartedly and say, Lord, here I am. Send me. I'm ready. I'm going to take full responsibility for what you have called me to do. And I believe if you constantly do this in your life, you're going to see how God will be ever so present in your life. You're going to see miracles taking place in your life. You're going to see God's goodness shining forth in your life. It's simply because, hey, you're going to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Stop passing the buck. Take the buck, right? And say, Lord, I am ready. I'm going to do whatever you ask of me. Amen? Well, praise God. Why don't we go ahead, let's bow our heads, let's bow our hearts, let's come before our Father God in heaven. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, uh, for this message today. And Lord, if we have been passing the buck, Lord, please forgive us. And help us to understand, Lord, it, it pleases you so much. When we can be like the prophet Isaiah and say, Lord, here I am. Send me. I'm ready to do your will. I'm ready to do your bidding. I'm going to just do whatever you ask of me. Father, I know when we have this kind of heart, uh, just this kind of tenacity, just to just do whatever you ask of us. Father, I know you're going to show your power in our lives. Your power will be displayed in our lives because we're going to see, Lord, just miracles taking place. We're going to just see, Father, just your goodness, just shining forth wherever we go. Father, I just thank you, knowing as we have this kind of mindset and this kind of heart, Father, you're going to show yourself to be so faithful and true. You're going to show yourself to be strong, ever so strong in our lives. As we just simply say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. I'm going to do whatever you ask. Father, I thank you, Lord, once again for my brothers and sisters who have heard this message. I pray that they will go forth in the world <laughs> this very day and say, Lord, I'm ready. Here I am. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praises. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. And we say together, Amen. Well, praise God and praise God, brothers and sisters. I, I'm so glad you were able to join me once again. And please join me again next week as we get into the Word of God. And don't forget, give God all the glory. Amen? Praise God.